In this video, I am going to boot and run original Altair floppy disk software on a wider variety of drive types than you've ever seen before. This is made possible by an enhanced floppy controller that I have in this computer. Now this controller can serve as a drop-in replacement for the original Altair controller, and as you might expect, then it can interface to the original Altair 8-inch drive we see here on the bottom. But in addition, it can also connect to a wide variety of other drive types, and other media for that matter, and make them look exactly like the original Altair 8-inch drive. And in addition to doing this for the 8-inch series, it can also do it for the Altair Mini Disc series, the little drive you see up here on the top. This is their 5 and a quarter inch series that came out later in the run of Altair's history. And in a time when it's getting harder and harder to find original Altair drives and equipment, the flexibility of this controller makes it much easier for Altair owners to keep a floppy disk system up and running with their Altair a system that can actually run original Altair software. In addition, the controller can also act as a reference point when you're trying to get an old controller or an old drive up and running. In addition to the obvious floppy type control functions, it can also provide up to 64K of RAM and 8K of ROM that can be enabled incrementally as needed to fill in holes that you might have or to totally replace RAM and ROM in your system just to eliminate variables that might be causing problems. So this is a great tool to have not just for running floppies, but for debugging and getting old systems up and running again. To find out more about this controller, visit DRAMP.com and then click on the For Sale link and you'll see a link for the FDC Plus controller. The FDC Plus is the Enhanced Floppy Disk Controller. Now in the rest of this video, we're going to go through demonstrations of uh, booting and running software on all sorts of different drive types. Our first demonstration is going to be using the Enhanced Controller as a drop-in replacement for the original Altair controller, talking to an original Altair 8-inch drive. If we take a look inside the computer, we can see the controller. It's got a 50-pin ribbon cable that exits and runs to the rear panel, where an adapter board converts to a DB37. This duplicates the original connector used with the original Altair controller. At this point, original cabling can be used to hook over into the back of the Altair drive. All right, so this pretty much duplicates the original setup other than the controller itself. Let's go ahead and power up the drive. This is Altair Disk Basic. We'll go ahead and insert that. And then over here on the computer, we'll examine FF00. That is the disk bootloader address. We'll set the first four bits to a one to tell the basic that it's running from a 2SIO port. And let it run. It's loading about six tracks. It's done already. That procedure's pretty quick. Come over here to the computer terminal. And there's the basic startup prompts, memory size, printer type, we'll do Okadata, highest disk number is zero, two and two files. Alright, before we mount the disk, you can't do anything with the disk, so you have to issue the mount call. If you look closely at the computer, it's going through all 77 tracks on the disk, reading four sectors off of every track. It does this in order to create a memory map of free space. It does this in about 15 seconds. This is actually a very efficient procedure that is done already. Much more efficient than a lot of other disk I own basic. Um, I guess Bill wasn't available to write everything, but that procedure was good. And now we can take a look at the directory with a files command. This is one of those that's kind of odd. Listen to this, you'll hear the head load and unload multiple times during this directory command. Alright, we can load a program. This is Lunar Lander. And now you look, you can see that's all in memory. Alright, so we have booted, we have loaded a program, and uh, use this disk and controller just like the original controller. Now the original Altair controller was a hard sector controller. That means it required hard sector media. If you look closely at this disk, take a look in this hole right here, you can see the hard sector holes go by as I rotate it. There's 32 holes in here marking each of the 32 sectors on the disk, plus one additional hole that marks a full rotation of the disk. The other type of media that was available at this time was soft sector media. Here's the hole on this one. You'll see it doesn't have all the holes. It only has one hole that goes by to indicate a full revolution of the disk. 
Now, unfortunately, the original Altair couldn't use these type of discs, so you had to find the hard sector media. However, this Altair Enhanced Controller can interchangeably use soft sector media. For example, this disc right here is also Altair Disc Basic. Come over here and examine FF00. Set it for 2SIO port and hit run. See it doing the boot. And now we're up and running. Answer the prompts. And hit mount. Alright, it's off and running just like before. Now the way this works is that the enhanced controller detects that it is soft media because it doesn't see sector holes going by and it syncs to the rotational rate of the drive and generates virtual hard sector pulses on its own so that everything else works just fine. In other words, it still treats it exactly like hard sector media. All the content is laid out exactly as if it was hard sectored. It's just that the controller generates the hard sector pulses instead of them coming from the drive. And now we can take a look and everything works just like the original. So this gives you the opportunity, this gives you the ability to use either type of media um, with the enhanced controller, which is handy because sometimes it's hard to find the hard sector disc. It just doubles the number of uh, sources you could possibly have for uh, media. Now unfortunately this won't work with all types of floppy drives. If you um, have a belt driven drive like the Shugart drives, the rotational rate of those just isn't stable enough within a single revolution to use this technique. These Altair hard discs, I mean, excuse me, the Altair hard sector floppies had a very tight layout and required very tight timing tolerances. And unfortunately, a belt driven drive just can't rotate at a guaranteed enough rate to make this work. Now, in these Altair cabinets, most of the drives were a Pertec FD400. These were actually DC motors, direct drive, and these were stable enough to use this technique. So this is kind of a handy thing to have up your sleeve when you're having to use um, soft sector media where that's all you have available. All right, so that concludes this demonstration, and uh, we'll now move on to the next one. All right, next we're going to demonstrate using the popular 800 series of drives from Shugart as a replacement for the Altair floppy disk. In this configuration, a cable runs straight from the disk controller all the way into the back of the Shugart drive. There is no drive cabinet or extra electronics associated with this like there is with the Altair configuration. So this is actually a simpler configuration and allows for some cost savings because all you really need is a drive and a power supply to get it up and running. Alright, we're going to use the exact same version of Altair Basic. This is actually the same disc even. Insert that into the drive, come over to the computer, examine the disc bootloader, FF00, set it to 2SIO, and hit run. Again, it boots quickly like we've seen before. Come over here to the computer screen. Let's answer the prompts. Well, it's uppercase. And again, nothing can be done until we mount the disc, so we'll do the mount procedure. Here you can actually hear it stepping. Again, we're doing the 77 tracks. Alright, that's completed. And we can load Lunar just like we did before. And take a look and see that it's in memory as well. Alright, so we use the exact same disk we used with the uh, Altair drive. We booted it with the exact same manner. Everything's exactly the same. The computer can't tell the difference. Software can't tell the difference. We essentially have ourselves an Altair computer and an Altair drive, but we didn't have to use an actual Altair piece of hardware. This simple Shugart drive worked for us just as well. Now these Shugart drives are far more readily available on eBay and places like that than the Altair drives are. That makes them less expensive. 
They're also easier to maintain and keep running in their old age. They're a pretty good reliable drive for their age. So this is a great way to have a single or dual drive system up and running for a lot less cost and a lot less headache than trying to get an original Altair up and running. Alright, so that does it for this particular drive. Now on to the next one. Next, we're going to use a high density 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive as a replacement for the Altair 8 inch drive. This is possible because these high density drives can duplicate the rotational rate and the data transfer rate and the capacity of the 8 inch drive. In fact, on this 5 and a quarter inch floppy is a byte for byte duplicate start to finish of the Altair Basic 8 inch floppy. And I'll show you that it works just the same. Insert the disk, set the disk boot loader to FF00. Set for 2SIO and hit run. You can see on the front panel it loading the six tracks just like every other time we've done this with the big drives. And we'll take a look at the screen. Go ahead and answer the prompts. Okay, and as always, can't do anything until we mount the disc. So we'll do the mount. And you can hear it off and running counting the tracks. Going through all 76 tracks, just like, or 77 tracks, just like on the other drives. The reason this works identically is because it truly is being treated exactly like an 8 inch hard sector disc. It's not doing anything different because it's a 5 and a quarter. It is an 8 inch disc the way it is operating. Alright, so we come back here. We can finish this up, do the files to see what's on this drive. And we can load Lunar like we have in the others. And there it is. Alright, so interesting de demonstration, but you might say, why would anybody do this rather than actually buy the 8 inch Shugarts or real 8 inch Altair drives? Actually, there are several reasons. One, these drives are much more readily available and therefore much less expensive than the 8 inch Altair or Shugart drives. You can find these on eBay for $25 to $50 most any day. This particular drive is a TAC 55 GFR. In addition to the drive being less expensive and easier to get, so is the media. The media is also very easy to find. In addition, the unit's obviously much smaller and much lighter, so if you're in a crowded computer lab in your house, it's kind of nice not to have to take up all that room. The power supply requirements are also much simpler. It uses just plus 12 and plus 5 on the standard 4-pin Molex connector that's used for drives and PCs for years and years, so it's not too hard to get power for these things. Um, and the other thing is that to get these drives up and running and keep them running is practically a no-brainer. All you have to really do is blow them off with some compressed air, I take a Q-tip and clean off the head, and then make sure anything that's supposed to move seems to freely move, and if it does, give it a whirl. If it works, you're done. If it doesn't work, throw that in the trash and move on to the next drive. Compare that to the 8-inch drives, which require quite a bit of work to get them up and running, recalibrated, and to keep them calibrated. So if what you're wanting is a floppy disk system, but you don't want to spend the money or the time to keep an 8-inch up and running, this is really a very good compromise for having a fully functional Altair floppy disk system. Next, we'll run an Altair floppy disk system without actually using a floppy disk at all. Instead, we'll run a server on a PC, and that server will send and receive disk data as it's requested by the Altair over a high-speed serial link. Let's take a quick look inside. In this case, as you can see, there's nothing hooked to the disk connector at all. Instead, the high-speed serial port built into the controller runs over to a PC where we will serve the data. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. That server runs at full speed, pretty much duplicates the original Altair speed, fast and slow, so to speak. We'll go ahead and examine FF00. Examine that, set for 2SIO and hit run. And again, you'll see the exact same pattern we've been seeing all along. Take a look at the uh, prompt here. Turn Okadata 022, and as always, we can't do anything until we mount. So now we'll go through and do the mount. You can see that running. 
going through all 77 tracks as before and this is all actually being served off a of PC. Now I'll show you that in a minute, it's just that it doesn't video very well. Alright, so that's all done. And we do a files command. You see the files and we can load Lunar like we always do. Let's see, Lunar. And list it there. And there it is. Alright, so there we're up and running without actually having to use a disk at all. This would be great if you had Altairs that you were trying to get up and running and what would be really handy is to be able to run a big basic program that has memory test or some other utility. Or for that matter, boot CPM and then you can run the assembler to write yourself a program for testing or you can run maybe a, you had a prom burner software or something like that. So even if you don't ever intend to have a full disk system, it lets you use it, especially like CPM for the utility it offers. Alright, I'm going to turn the lights out briefly so that I can actually get video of the PC. It's a high gloss screen and it doesn't work very well. Hold on just one second. Alright, sorry for all the bumping around. Okay, there's a quick shot of the server program. And if you look up here at the top, you can see that we have disk basic loaded. And the disk is currently enabled. That's where the actual program left it. The head's not loaded and it shows you what track it's on. I'm going to load a big program so you can watch it. If I can type in the dark. Alright, so there you can see the track moving, the head loading and unloading. This as basic goes through and loads this program. This is a long program, so you'll get to see some activity. Okay, it's done already. But anyway, so that's a glimpse of the server. And that was the program I loaded. So there you get an idea of how you can actually have a floppy disk system. It runs full speed, no special software whatsoever but not even actually have to mess with having a hard disk, I mean a floppy disk at all. Alright, that does it for this video. Next we'll move on to demonstrating the mini disk series of, uh, of disks and how that would work with this controller. Next we'll take a look at using the enhanced controller with the Altair mini disk. The Altair mini disk was a five and a quarter inch drive and like all the original five and a quarter inch drives, only had about one fourth the capacity of the eight inch drive, and the throughput was about half as fast. And we'll see the effect of that as we uh, go through this demo. Let's take a quick look at how this is configured on the inside of the Altair. As you can see, the 50 pin ribbon cable on the controller runs to an adapter in the back where it terminates in the same 26 pin header as the original disc controller did. From there, an original cable, ribbon cable, can run into the back of the disk drive. Alright, so let's go ahead and boot this. We're going to boot Altair um, Mini Disk Basic. This is pretty much the exact same size of memory image as the original Basic that we've been using on the 8 inch drive. But since everything takes a bit longer, it's a slower drive, you'll see that this takes longer to boot. But we boot it in the exact same manner. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Examine FF00, set it for 2SIO, and hit run. And again, you'll notice this does take quite a bit longer to run, quite a bit longer to boot. Alright, it's now done. And we get the same prompt. If you look up at the top of the screen, you can see this says Altair Mini Disk Basic. Prompt for memory size, Okadata 022. Alright, now at this point with the 8 inch drives, we would normally just mount the disk. But with Altair Mini Disk and with the low capacity of these drives, the first thing you typically did was go ahead and just remove the disk you booted with and insert instead your own program disk. This is because of the boot disk, you couldn't write any files to it. So we'll now just stick in a data disk actually two slightly different formats of disk for a boot disk versus a, a data disk that can contain our own files. And so now we'll go up here and we'll do the mount that we've been doing on these other drives. And you'll see this goes through a little bit quicker 
than it did with the 8 inch drives. The reason is because it's only got to go through 35 tracks. See, it's done already instead of 77. Um, and each track only has 16 sectors instead of 32. So it's one fourth the amount of data. So even though it's slower, it actually is a quicker process because it has so much less disk to go through. All right, so now we can do a files and see what's on here. Let's see, you see everything's a bit slower. We'll load uh, MDT, that is a mini disk test. And take a look at the program. All right, so there's the enhanced floppy controller working with a mini disk drive. Now, like the 8 inch controller, the mini disk controller, uh, which is a different controller than the 8 inch, it's physically different, but as you've noticed, the enhanced controller can work either drive. You don't have to have both controllers, the enhanced controller can handle either. Uh, this controller is also a hard sector controller, just like the 8 inch. And just like the 8 inch, we can actually use soft sector media with it. So here is mini disk basic on a soft sector disk. If you take a look, I don't know if we can see it, but there's no holes going by there. There's the one, the one index hole. Other than that, there are no others. This is a soft sector disk. So we can insert this. And we'll go ahead and we'll examine the boot address. Let me reset the computer. Examine the boot address, set for 2SIO. Hit run. You can see it doing the boot. Again, this takes noticeably longer than it does on the 8-inch disk, even though it's loading the same amount of data. Okay, that's up and running. Go ahead and answer the prompts. And like before, we'll go ahead and we'll just eject this disk. And now I'll put in the soft sector version of the uh, data disk. And we can mount that. And that goes through pretty quick again because it's just 35 tracks. Alright, that's done already. Oops. You can see what's on the disk. And we can load MDT just like we did before. All right, so there we see we can use either soft sector disk or hard sector or hard sector disks with this uh, mini disk controller and the enhanced controller. I mean the mini disk drive and the enhanced controller for the Altair. Next we're going to connect a five and a quarter inch drive directly to the enhanced controller and the enhanced controller will make that drive look exactly like an Altair mini disc. We take a look on the inside you can see the 50 pin ribbon cable runs to a small adapter board there in the back I have it just laying out at the moment that converts to the 34 pin cables that are used with five and a quarter inch drives and it just hooks straight into the back of the drive. Up to four drives can be hooked on to the same cable and this will allow you to have a completely 100% compatible mini disk system running uh, with just using standard 5 and a quarter inch drives like you see here. This happens to be a Shugart SA400. Everything is compatible including the media. We'll go ahead and boot mini disk basic using the exact same CD that we booted um, the mini disk with. Let me stick it in. Examine FF00. Stop the machine. All right, examine FF00, set it to SIO, and hit run. Now this is the same size basic image as the 8 inch. This is Altair Mini Disk Basic, but it takes a bit longer to boot as we've seen before because it is a slower drive. Okay, that boot is complete. All right, we'll take a look over here on the screen. Let's see if I get both of these in this shot at once. All right, we'll answer the prompts. Right, and just like before, there's no point in mounting the boot disk. You typically will remove that and insert instead your program or your data disk and then mount that. I'll type the mount command. 
and it runs off and it's running through all 35 tracks. Again, it's about a fourth as much data as the 8-inch drive, so it goes pretty quick. All right, that's done already. All right. Do a files command to see what's on this disk. And we'll load the same program we did before, the mini disk test. And you can see that that got loaded. All right, so there you have it. We have a up and working mini disk system that quickly and easily just using a standard five and a quarter inch drive and then of course the enhanced controller. Now just like the mini disk we can turn around and use soft sector disk with this if we wanted. The enhanced controller picks up on the fact that it's soft sectored and starts generating hard sector pulses so that everything else just works completely transparent. And unlike the eight inch drives this works very reliably even with the five and a quarter inch drives that have belt driven motors. The reason is not because the belt drives or the drive motors are better in the five and a quarter inch drives. Instead, it's because the layout of the data on the disk is nowhere near as tight as it is on the eight inch drives. Uh, as far as timing errors allowed, it's about three times the amount of timing variance allowed on the five and a quarters than there is on the eighth. And that's plenty to allow the drive motors to have their warble and everything else work fine. Now, pretty much any of the older five and a quarter inch drives that are 48 track per inch that includes the 360K drives that were present on all the early IBM PCs and clones, uh, any of those drives will write media that's compatible with the original Altair mini disk. But what if you didn't have one of these older 48 TPI drives? What if you only had some of the newer uh, 96 TPI drives like the TIAC that we showed earlier in this video? Well, those will work just fine. You'll get the exact same experience. You'll see exactly how Altair mini disks worked. The only problem is the media will not interchange with the original mini disk. It will interchange between 96 TPI drives, but it won't interchange with the mini disk. But it's a great way to get a feel for what this was like if you happen to have those drives laying around and not some of these older ones. All right, now I'm not going to bother showing you the, uh, the soft sector operation. I'm not going to bother showing you the TIAC operation either, because at this point you're kind of getting the idea and it's getting a bit redundant. And I'm not going to show you the last option either, and you can kind of guess what that is. You don't actually have to have a working floppy disk at all in order to have a mini disk system. You can actually serve the disk off the PC using a high-speed serial port like we demonstrated earlier with the, uh, the TIAC, excuse me, with the 8-inch drives. The server running on the PC doesn't care whether it's serving an 8-inch drive or a 5-and-a-quarter inch drive. It works either way. But as far as the... Um, disk controller and the, and the Altera are concerned, it will work exactly like you had the five and a quarter inch drive, timing and everything. All right, well that does it for this video. If you want to learn more about this card, go take a look at dramp.com. You can click on the for sale link on that page, and then on that page look for the FDC Plus Enhanced Controller. That's this controller. And so if you're a collector of Altairs and you keep them up and running, you'll find that a card like this is an extremely great tool to have in your lab.